Hello YouTube, how is everyone doing professional here? Welcome back to part 2 of Ace Attorney. I know a lot of people have been requesting this. Apologies for the short delay here. I'm going to try to have a part up every day. It's just, I was just finishing up the Modern Warfare 3 rant and review, which that's up now. We're going to continue where we left off. We're going to get to the bottom of this case. And I think there's something very shady about Shady Smith's death. So anyways, let's find out exactly what's going on here. There's only one, um, uh, game where you can be dealt bad cards all night and still win. Poker. Eh? You see, poker is all about reading your opponent. In that way, it's a lot like a court case. Poker is like trial law? Figure out what your opponent is thinking, and you win. Well, yeah, but what's... Uh, but that's harder than it sounds. I think not. Try at, as they might to conceal it. Everyone reveals their true thoughts in the end. Their body language can become a valuable source of information. You're kidding. That witness, for instance, Miss Orly. She would touch the back of her neck during certain parts of her testimony. Do you notice? Uh, no. Come on, who'd notice that? Words, habits, twitches. It's all information for the reading. That's the secret to winning, Apollo. Someone taught me, and now I pass the secret on to you. But, I'm not worthy. I mean, there's no way I'll pick up on these signals. No, you can do it. Huh? You just don't know it yet. What are you talking about? But you will, soon. Ah, uh, almost forgot. One more thing, about this case. You should know, I haven't told the truth to anyone yet. What? I knew it! I have my reasons, of course. All shall be revealed. And Apollo, I need you to be there, defending me. I need your power. My, um, power? I had no idea my cords of steel were that special. It's time. The real trial begins now. Do your best. So, um, what he was saying about, um... This is where we left off last time. So, uh, what he was basically saying about the, um, uh... Uh, what he was basically saying about, like, body language, like, you know, people making movements, like, you know, touching the back of their neck, uh, that is actually, in real, that's actually true what he was saying, this is actually, um, uh, realistic, this part. Um, it could, if somebody's, like, moving around like that, touching the back of their neck, it usually indicates, you know, one of two things. Either the person's really nervous, they could be telling the truth, but it's also a sign they're really nervous, or two, they, they are lying. Now, um, uh, People do weird gestures when they show that they're lying, everyone's different. But um, one common thing to tell if somebody's lying to you, and this, is, this works a lot of times, is if somebody's not maintaining eye contact with you. If somebody's not maintaining eye contact with you when you ask them something, uh, they're probably lying to you. Like, if somebody's looking at the floor, looking up at the ceiling when they're explaining something to you, they're probably lying. The reason they're not looking right into your eyes is because... Keeping eye contact with you and trying to make up a story is very difficult, so they have to keep eye contact away from you because they're trying to think of, they're tr making up something that didn't happen. April 20th, 12.14pm, District Court, courtroom number 2. Okay, let's find out what the hell is going on here exactly. Court will now reconvene. What happened in this murder? Has our witness, Miss Olga, orally recovered? Y yes your honor. Er, well, she's regained consciousness. Perhaps we can hear her version of the events again. Yeah, if a witness lost consciousness, they would probably not be in a state to testify again if that something like that actually happened. Um, the prosecution would be probably re um, uh, the defense would probably be arguing that their their um, testimony is not accurate enough because they're not in a good state of mind. That's the thing. You see, she's quite fatigued. You're looking a bit fatigued yourself, Mr. Payne. <laughs> Sadly, fatigue is insufficient grounds for refusing to testify or prosecute. The defense would like to request that Miss Orly um, take the stand. Very well. The witness will take the stand. Perhaps you could repeat your name and profession. Or perhaps you'd rather admit that you're a poor liar and a poor loser. Nyet, 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 nyet. Not. What the? Name's Olga Orly, that's the truth. I'm a pro dealer. People call me Olga Quick Fingers Orly. What? Oh, oh really? Want to know something else? I'm not really Russian, and my nat last name sounds like oh really. There, that's the truth. I hope you're satisfied. 
Well, she just basically lied about her whole background. You know, this is this is the thing that I don't that that's really unrealistic about Ace Attorney. Like, I know these games are like meant to be funny a lot of times, but the thing is, this would not fly at all in court. If like if if all of a sudden a witness out of nowhere just came out when they were testifying, and yeah, yeah, you know, I'm not Russian when they were pretending to be Russian. That's not my real name. Is they would not be allowed to testify at that point. Like, the, the entire testimony would be thrown out at that point because they lied about their name, they lied about their background. What else could they have lied about? They've basically proven at that point that they're an unreliable witness. Witness, you will tell the court what you were really up to that night. Fine, I'll talk. We had a plan, see? Let me remind you that you are currently under oath. Any further fabrications will have serious consequences. Well, there should already be serious consequences because she lied about being Russian and she lied about her entire background. She lied about who she was. Fine. So she's a scammer. Like I said, I'm a pro. That guy Smith hired me to do what I do best. I was planted at the Borscht Bowl Club several days prior to the night of the game. As a waitress. So you were in cahoots with the victim. Not that he needed my help, Smith is a well-known poker player in some circles. But winning wasn't the main purpose of this game. It was about destroying a legend, the unbeatable Phoenix Wright. The plan was simple. Elegant, really, you see? We set up a trap of sorts. I was to plant a card in Wright's pocket beforehand, and then deal five aces during one of their games. When their hands were revealed, Smith would call him out and search Wright. He would then pull out the planted card and the trap would, uh, snap shut. You swap the cards. Expose the cheater and losing on top of it. Uh, it would have made a great double play. Just like that, the legend would be dashed to pieces. Indeed. Getting caught red-handed at cheating would cast doubt on his all his prior wins. A seven-year legend destroyed by one little card game. That was the plan. Oh really, Orly? How dr droll. But it appears you made quite the mistake. A mistake? I agree, the trap was elegant. Yet, what happened to that planted card? Hey, that's right! He's lucky, I'll give him that. You'd ha have to be, um... You'd have to be to slip free from a trap laid by Olga Quickfingers Orly. Oh, really? The witness would be much cuter if she dispensed with the evil mastermind uh, uh, stick. You? Who wants to be cute? I'm not cute. I'm bad. You hear me? Bad. Yeah, it, it, I don't know how this witness would honestly think her testimony would hold up at this point. Is, um, uh, when you're, uh, through being bad, perhaps you could testify to the court. Tell us about this trap, and how it was sprung. Witness testimony. Best laid traps. That night, I planted a card like I was supposed to. And Wright lost the last hand, just like he was supposed to. Then Smith searched him. But the planted card was gone. The trap failed. The next moment, Wright picked up a bottle and swung it. It wasn't me who hit Smith. It was a no-good cheating defendant. Well, that could basically be self-defense at that point. Is, um, uh, is... It, it, he literally... Smith approached Wright, tried to tackle him, and was being aggressive with him, and if Wright actually picked up a bottle and hit him on the head, you could argue that's self-defense. Hmm, a surprisingly frank testimony that still leaves us mostly in the dark. The trap was perfect, I tell you, perfect. If that rotten cheater hadn't messed it up. Look who's talking. Well, the testimony, for what it's worth, is all yours, Mr. Justice. Well, the testimony should be thrown out, but with witnesses like her, who needs criminals? And with defendants like Mr. Wright, who needs prosecutors? Cross-examination. That night, I planted a card like I was supposed to. This planted card, which card was it exactly? The Trump card. The Five of Hearts. Like I said, that's why the case, the case is called Turnabout Trump. Let me guess. Mr. Wright was to have a uh, switch to five with the eight ace to make a full house. At least that's what you were going to accuse him of doing, thereby ruining his legend. I slid it into Wright's pocket. When was this? Why, before the match, of course. While he was eating. At the Borst Bowl Club, we serve Borst and suckers. Remind me never to go there. 
Of course, the card was to make its grand debut during the game. Like a good borscht, a good plot must be cooked up early and allowed to thicken. And Wright lost the last hand, uh, just like he was supposed to, then Smith searched him. So, everything went according to plan. Exactly. The fifth uh, ace came up, so it's obvious the switch went off without a hitch. Once the extra card was found in his pocket, Wright would be forever known as a cheat and a fraud. There are worse things to be known as, I suppose. Tell us what happened with the search. But the planet card was gone, the trap failed. The card disappeared. Yeah, my trump card, the five of hearts. Gone, without a trace. Poof, Zippo. Where did the card go? We searched every nook and cranny. Even inside his cute little hat. But the card was nowhere to be found, is this correct? Never in my long storied career. Never has Quick Fingers Orly been so readily duped. Oh really? So what did happen to that five of hearts? Don't look at me. Why don't you ask that a cheating lying two face of it? Well you tried to accuse him of cheating! And he literally he foiled your cheat and now you're accusing him of cheating. It's so the five of hearts is still missing in action. The next moment Wright picked up a bottle and swung it. Wait, isn't that a little odd? W what's odd? You searched Mr. Wright thoroughly and found nothing. Which means he didn't cheat. Which means he had no reason to strike the victim. W well w What was that just now? I sensed something. Something wrong, Mr. Justice. No, n nothing, Your Honor. What to do? Should I press her a little harder? Press harder, yep. Miss Orly, you're hiding something. W w what are you talking about? You, you... M m me? Quick fingers, Orly, hide something. The defense will refrain from baseless accusations. I have one question for the witness, then. You say you saw the moment the defendant hit the victim. Is this true? Uh, of course it's true. I, I did, did see it, honest. I saw it when Wright hit him. I, again, it's happening again. With my own eyes, I saw it. It's, she's lying. What's this weird vibe I'm getting? That witness, for instance. Miss Orly. Oh, yes, yeah, she's touching the back of her neck. She would touch the back of her neck during certain parts of her testimony. Did you notice? Look at what she's doing. Touching her neck, was it? Whoa, what's going on? This sensation, it's coming into focus. There, that twitch, it's so clear. It's like I could perceive her habit, like I couldn't before. Gotcha! Miss Orly, perhaps you are unaware of this yourself. Uh, un unaware of what? Whenever you get to a certain part of your testimony, you touch the back of your neck with your left hand. My- my neck? So? So what? Well, what indeed, Justice? I hadn't noticed anything of the sort. When she says the part of her- uh, that part of her testimony, she's subconsciously recalling something. Her body reacts to memory, and she touches her neck. Yeah, because she's trying to imagine something that didn't happen. I'm sure of it. A memory? Would someone care to explain what he's babbling about? This is highly unusual. Let's ask the defense. Now, the thing about this is, you know, somebody doing something like this in court, like, yes, it's an indication that they're lying, but it's not really 100% proof. Like, the defense can't, like, go after the witness and say, oh, you know, you're lying, you're touching the back of your neck. It's, it really wouldn't hold up. You claim the witness is remembering something. Maybe you have evidence of this memory to show us. Her habit is scratching uh, her neck whenever she talks at the moment of the crime. The world remind her most of the moment of the crime. Miss Orly, whenever you recall the crime that night, you scratch your neck. I've noticed it happens when you think about the moment of the crime. There must be uh, some reason behind this habit of yours. I believe the weapon that left an inseparable impression on your neck is this.
I'm sorry about my capture card uh, uh, doing that, that, guys. I don't know why it does it with this game for some reason. One moment here. Okay, hopefully that does, doesn't do that anymore. I don't know why sometimes my capture card, for some reason, in this game, it, like, it, um, it does that, like, it more twitches a little bit. Um... Why does Wright have a, a piece of tape on the back of the phone? Whenever he talks about the moment of the crime, she touches her neck. And what reminds us more of the uh, of the moment than this bottle, the murder weapon? But something doesn't fit. If you were only the witness to the crime, why would that make you touch your neck like you're in pain? W what's he talking about now? It was Mr. Smith, the victim, who was hit. Not you. Uh, um... This is a cross-examination, not a cross-wild conjecture. The, the witness's habits, they're completely irrelevant. Justice, I'll admit, I'm a bit confused myself. Yeah, I'm sorry about the twitching of my capture card, guys. I I don't know why it does it with this game. Um, I'll admit, I'm a bit confused myself. This is certainly a unique cross-examination. I'll explain later. Just trust me. Now is our only chance to break her. Miss Orly, please testify in detail about the moment of the crime. The very moment. And yet, I am knowing nothing. Now she has her reg disguise back on? Um, we know you're not Russian. The witness will testify, please, now. Ah, fine. He's the one who did it. I didn't let him out of my sight until the cops got there. Hold it! You seem uneasy. You try standing up here. Her eyes are darting all over the place. I must be getting warm. Tell me, after the crime, what was the defendant like? Uh, well, he must have been stunned by the weight of his crime. He sat in a daze at that table until the cops came, but Phoenix called the cops. Intriguing. I believe you've gotten all the testimony you're going to get out of this witness. So what do you think about her testimony? I'll tell you what I think. Her testimony is... Flawed. Is basically bogus. It contradicts the evidence. But what's that? Well, show us this evidence, Mr. Justice. This evidence that you claim contradicts the testimony. You didn't let him out of her sight until the cops got there. I know there's some evidence that contradicts that. The phone! On the restaurant's first floor, that's where he went. Miss Orly, we have a record here that clearly contradicts what you said. It states the police were alerted by a report from the defendant. Eh? And we know that the defendant left the room, climbed the stairs, and made that phone call from the first floor of the Borscht Bowl Club. Ah! So, explain how you kept your eyes on the defendant when he left the room entirely.
That man who picked up a bottle and swung it that night wasn't the defendant. So it's gonna show us what really happened in that room. You dirty cheat. Check his pockets, now. It's gone. The card's gone. You lose. Justin Smith grabbed the bottle from next to right. And he hit me. You, some master of cheating you turned out to be. Yes, that's what I thought. That was her scream there. When I came to, the victim was already dead. Is that it? That's why I couldn't reveal who I really was. If it came out that I was in the league with Smith, I'd be a suspect for sure. Well, where does this leave us? Well, if he was trying to kill Olga and, S and Phoenix hit him, that's self-defense on her because the thing about this is self-defense isn't just here here's what people don't understand about self-defense is self-defense isn't just protecting yourself it can be protecting somebody else if you are in the same place as somebody else and somebody else is about to get hurt and you save them that's also self-defense that's what a lot of people don't know M madness th th this is madness i'm dreaming it must have been me who was hit with a bottle and i'm imagining all of this it appears our prosecution is at, at its wit's end, and frankly, I can't blame him. Mr. Gavin, what do you think about this turn of events? M Mr. Gavin, sir? I believe that's as a defense in this case. We are compelled to call Miss Orly a big fat liar. W what? Three were in the room the night of the murder, the defendant, the victim, and her. And she has a motive. A motive. Her plot foiled. The witness got into an argument with her client, Mr. Uh, Smith, and the denouncement of that argument was murder. What? I didn't. I'm no killer. It's a trap. Someone's trying to frame me. <laughs> what tangled webs we weave when we pra practice to deceive. So tangled we catch ourselves in the process. But Mr. Wright? Such a hasty conclusion. What the hell is going on here? It's not like you, Christoph Gavin. What are you saying? Why not consider the other possibility? That there was another person in the room at the time of the murder. Yeah, so like I said on the on the other part, is there was the guard. The guard that was supposed to be looking through the window. That could it could have been him. Right. Like Mr. Wright was saying before recess. A single card was swapped into the victim's hand after the murder. And the one who swapped the card didn't know two colors of cards were being used fourth person who doesn't know anything about poker. Ah, this theory again. Your fourth person doesn't exist. Indeed. That's why I decided to bring this case to court. Here, where there's no escape and no chance for deception. The perfect place to catch the real criminal. The, the, the real criminal. And we're in luck. A clue to the real criminal's identity was kindly provided for us. And right at the beginning of the trial, no less. W what? Apollo, perhaps you know what I'm talking about. Um, sorry? Remember what I said. The fourth person who swapped the cards made one critical error. He or she wasn't considering the color in the backs of the cards. Right. But how could such an obvious mistake occur? It's somebody who doesn't know poker. The cards used for the last game were red. Yet, there is one person here in our court who thought those cards were blue. Yeah, I had that impression too, but why? Well, Apollo, I think you can figure out who it was. But it's not me, I swear. Well, no one's accusing you. Who is this fourth person? Why do I always get put on the spot like this? Let's hear what the defense has to say. Who was it? Who thought the cards used in the final game were blue? Um...
100% it's not Phoenix. It's not the victim. Not the prosecutor. Not Olga. The only person it could be was Kristoff because... Kristoff, remember, Kristoff said that he was with Phoenix the night of the murder. He literally said that in the first part. This is gonna be so weird, you accuse your boss of literally being in on it. As I expected, your eyes and ears are as sharp as your hair. I, I was right? Kristoff Gavin, you were the fourth person that night. But, but, of course Mr. Gavin knows the color of the cards. How would he? As you can see, the photo of the crime scene is black and white. Right. You can't tell which of the cards are blue. The ones on the floor or the table. But, but, look! You can see the colors in this photo. Yes, when he said the cards were blue. It was well before this evidence came to light. It's true that the defendant was engaged in a game of poker with the victim. Yet it was only that a game, in the purest sense. A competition, your honor. A, a competition? Yes, a test of wits, a silent class of passions. Only the cards, their backs, reft in blue flame, know its final outcome. Well, Miss Kristoff? Mr. Gavin? Mr. Gavin, I is, is something the matter? Hmm? No, 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 nothing. Excuse me, it was just so sudden. Right. You aren't seriously accusing me, are you? Oh, Kristoff. You know, even I never take a joke this far. This has gone beyond ridiculous, beyond dumb. This is insanity. The defendant accusing his own defense attorney of murder? I assure you, I'm quite sane. But what possible connection could Mr. Gavin have to the victim? I wasn't aware that I had a connection to Mr. Smith either. Yes, but Mr. Gavin and, and victim and the victim have never even met. Well, what if they have? Huh? There's a possibility, after all. They may have met that night, before the game started. W what are you suggesting? Is this the truth Mr. Wright was staying silent about? Well, only one thing to do. Mr. Wright, the defense would like to request that you testify to the court. The defense would like to request no such thing. Mr. Gavin? Testimonies must relate to the case. How could anything happening um, before th uh, that game of poker be related? It's very related. Because if, if, if there was some kind of plan for some kind of murder, it could very much be... So, what he's saying is, no, this is not an objection. If you basically object to something like that, saying, oh, something that happened before the murder, no, 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 no. That could very much be relevant to the murder. What the hell is going on here? This is crazy. This is an insane conspiracy. I'm not sure I follow Mr. Gavin. As I explained before, the defense believes that Miss... Miss Orly... Am I to assume you speak for Mr. Justice in this? He is a defense, not you. Mr. Justice, the matter of Mr. Wright's testimony is up to you. Oh, okay. <sighs> Does the court, in your opinion, need to hear Mr. Wright's testimony? Yes, hear the testimony. This is Mr. Wright's strategy. He was planning this all along, and I intended to see it through. The defense would like to request that Mr. Wright testify to the court. And to justice, you would betray me, your teacher. I'm sorry, Mr. Gavin. This isn't about loyalty. This is about the truth. Very well, the defendant. Mr. Wright will take the stand, please. What is going on here? I thought I thought that Gavin and um and, and Phoenix were like longtime friends. Like why would why would he want to set Phoenix up like this. Appetite before murder. That evening, Kristoff and I had dinner. We sat at the table in this photograph. So, yes, I know that. Kristoff uh, Lily said in the very first part, he said that he was with Phoenix the night of the murder. He put himself there. And then remember what I said in the first part, that Kristoff could be called as a witness. J.D. Smith walked in five minutes after Kristoff left. When the trap failed, Smith hit the waitress. The girl was knocked out cold, and Smith was uncontrollable. Um, uh, I left to call the police. When I returned, he was dead, blood streaming from a cut on his forehead. That's when I made another phone call, to defense attorney Gavin. Mr. Gavin! 
You were at the Boris Bowl Club the night of the murder? I mean, he admitted that to justice, too. I dined with him rather frequently. Uh, and he talked to the defendant on the phone directly after the murder? Well, the thing is, that's not uncommon, is right after a crime happens to call your lawyer, that actually happens right away. So, like, um, if there's, like, a self... For example, in a self-defense situation, what a lot of people do is they immediately call their lawyer right after the situation happens. And, um... And the thing is, the, and the thing about this is, one of the absolute worst things that people do, one of the worst things that people do in a self-defense situation, we don't know if this is truly self-defense, if Kristoff was, um, uh, we don't know what happened, if Kristoff murdered him, or if it was self-defense or what, but one of the worst things that people do in a self in a self-defense situation is they leave the scene of the crime. You never do something like that, you never leave the scene of the crime, uh, because if you leave the scene of the crime, that's gonna look really, really bad for you. Um, uh, you want to be you want to be the first one to talk to the police. You don't want the other person to talk to the police. And um, uh, if anything, you just you don't have to tell the police everything. You can you, you can remain silent, call your lawyer, but you should still be at the pre at the scene of the crime. You should never leave the scene of the crime. So Kristoff, if this was a self defense situation, Kristoff made a really stupid mistake by literally leaving the scene of the crime. But if this was murder, this is com something completely different. Um, and and he talked to the defendant on the phone directly after the murder. Quite against my will, I had become involved in a murder. I thought I might be in need of a lawyer, so I called him. You were planning this all along, weren't you, right? Just because you wanted to drag me into your little murder trial. The only thing I want is the truth. As I did back then and now. I thought my office was doing you a favor when we took on your defense. It appears that I was wrong. Very well. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Justice. S sir? He's lying, and you're going to expose him. Uh, understood, sir. Mr. Gavin versus Mr. Wright, this can't end well. Why can't I have a normal trial? So, I'll tell you guys something. Um, out of, uh, out of all the Ace Attorney games that I ever played, because I played five Ace Attorney games before I played this game, this game I've never played before, so I don't know what's going to happen here. Out of all the Ace Attorney games that I've played, this is the most insane first case. This is. Like, this is, like, the best first case that I've ever played in an Ace Attorney game. Because all of the first cases are typically pretty easy and pretty quick to solve. This one is going on, you know, this is, like, the third hour that we're going on into this. And this is, like, this seems to be, like, a massive giant conspiracy. Uh, that evening, Kristoff and I had dinner. We sat at the table in this photograph. You had dinner with Mr. Gavin? Yes. He dines with me at the Boris Bowl Club quite frequently. We were enjoying a usual dinner at our usual spot, as usual. Usual. I always eat at the table closest to the piano. I see. Uh, where, uh, Mr. Smith was sitting. So, the plates and such on the table were from your dinner. Indeed, the remnants of my meal of Kristoff. We dined for two hours, then Kristoff left, after that. Katie Smith walked in five minutes after Kristoff left. Five minutes. So, the two of them could have passed in the restaurant during the time. That would have been a fateful encounter, to be sure. Heh <laughs> Oh, Mr. Wright. What was it you said? Christoph Gavin and Shady uh, Smith may have met. I believe I did say that. Here, I was all nervous about this meeting. And now we hear they just pa passed in the hall. Hmm. It does seem a little weak as a pre pretense for murder. Oh, would be if that were all that really happened. Come on, Mr. Wright. What are you hiding this time? When the trap failed, Smith hit the waitress. About this failed trap. This is the same trap that Mr. Miss Olga Orly mentioned. The plan was simple, elegant, really. You see, we set up a trap of sorts. I was to plant a card in Wright's pocket beforehand, and then deal five aces during one of their games. When their hands were revealed, Smith would call him out and search Wright. He would then pull out the planted card and the trap would snap shut. You swap the cards. Just like that, the legend would be dashed to pieces. Yes, a harmless prank in essence. It was by a, qu a quirk of fate that I just happened to discover it. A quirk? I happened to put my hand in my pocket and found a card. The card she planted. Yes, 
I snuck a peek at it and I found it was a five of hearts. I had a feeling something might happen, so I disposed of the card. Before the game. Dispose? Where is the card? Where? There was an empty bottle of grape juice I had been drinking right beside me. I threw the card inside the bottle. An empty bottle of grape juice. The murder weapon? That's how he got his fingerprints on it. Yes, I rolled it up and shoved it in. The colored glass makes it hard to see. Wait a second. Is there really a card in there? Hmm. A battle of wits between the deceiver and the would-be deceived. That sounds like terrific drama. A card inside the murder weapon. That's strange. Did the police miss it in their investigation? Maybe I'll take a look. Mr. Wright, the poker head of courtroom number three approves of this battle of wits. Please revise your testimony to this new information. Discovered the trap during the game and disposed of the card in the bottle. Bottle is completely empty. I don't see anything inside, that's the thing. Find the bottle. I perceive my opponent's intent immediately. I'm used to entrapment, you see? I knew what was coming. So you struck first, I like that. I know every trick in the book. They don't work on me. At least when you get lucky and stick your hand in your pocket, they don't. The girl was knocked out cold and Smith was uncontrollable. I left to call the police. You made the call to the police from the first floor of the restaurant, correct? Exactly. Cell phones don't get a signal down in the hideout. Why any, uh, was anyone else on the first floor at the time? Not a soul. It was the middle of the night, after all. So there in the darkened restaurant, I called the cops. After making the call, I returned to the hideout. It didn't seem right to leave the injured waitress alone. When I returned, he was dead, blood streaming for a cut in his forehead. And when you returned, the victim was already... Dead. Yes. I'll admit, I was a little startled uh, when I walked in. A little. He was bleeding from his forehead, after all. I guess I'll, I'd be startled too if, if I walked in on a scene like that. That's when I made another phone call to defense attorney Gavin. Could you explain why you called Mr. Gavin? It's, I'd obviously gotten involved in a rather sticky affair. And I figured Kristoff's law office would get, uh, give me a friend uh, rate for my defense fees. Ah, uh, glad to hear you intend to pay. Oh, I'll pay in full, Kristoff. It was I who got you involved, after all. You may find the price of your defense quite high, my good friend. Quite high. Is this the truth that Mr. Wright was talking about? Justice, you know what you have to do. He's lying. Expose him. Now. Y yes, sir. What's Mr. Wright trying to tell me with this testimony? The truth has to be in there somewhere. Look at this one more time here. Bottle's completely empty. Objection! Uh, Mr. Wright, if I may. Yes? I've examined the bottle and I don't see any card in here. Hmm, no? What, Mr. Wright? Surely isn't all you have to s say for yourself? I can't say that I know what happened to the card. I did put it in that bottle, however. Hmm. Perhaps a fifth person came and took it out. Oh, and a sixth person could have helped. Mr. Gavin, Mr. Wright is your client. 
My apologies, Your Honor. I won't have you dis- uh, arging uh, our investigation either. We looked inside that bottle. There was nothing. But what's going on? Is it- is Mr. Wright hoodwinking- hoodwinking us again? Or did the car just disappear? In any case, please continue the cross-examination. I'm afraid decisive co contradictions call for decisive evidence. Oh. Push him harder, Justice. Break him. It's just you and the witness in the ring. Go for the KO. Uh, why do I get the feeling we're not on, on our client's side anymore? Where is the card? Is it in the phone? That's what I was thinking. It might be in the phone. It might be in the battery. That's that's where the card might be. Let's look at all of his statements. The phone, let me see if this is right. Objection! I want to check the battery in that phone. Damn. How would he see the forehead if, if the hat is still on? Objection! Am I right? Mr. Wright, if I may. Yes? Take a look at this photograph of the crime scene. See the victim here? He's wearing a hat. I wouldn't think you could see blood on his forehead. Good point. Justice. Next time you point out an inconsistency, put a little more umph into it. Mr. Wright, can you explain this to the court? Ah, uh, I forgot to mention something. I was the one who put the hat on his head. Eh? You? You put the hat on the dead man's head? He wore it for an entire poker game. After calling the police, when I returned to the scene, his head was in full view. Shining bright, just like in this photograph. And? I picked up his hat off the floor and put it on his head. W w why do you do a thing like that? All I can say is, I'm sorry. But that's the only thing I touched at the crime scene. Though Miss Orly didn't see it. It being the victim's, or er, his head. I think not. She was out cold. I believe I was the w only one who witnessed his head. Ah, uh, here we go again. Mr. Gavin? Ahem, <laughs> pardon. It just seems that our client is determined to lie his way through this case. Hmm. Hey, uh, that he's still our client, isn't he? I believe that's enough of that. Uh, Mr. Gavin? This witness's testimony is more like a travesty. It's riddled with lies. I'm beginning to see how you came, um, uh, to lose your attorney's badge seven years ago. Well, so he lost his attorney's badge? That's why he hasn't been an attorney for seven years? You certainly have a unique way of treating your clients, Kristoff. I never knew. I believe it was you who threw the first stone. Mr. Wright, if you intend to ever tell the truth about this case, it's now or never. Don't be misled, I haven't told a single lie here. Eh? 
When I noticed the trap, I put the card in the bottle to dispose of it. And when I put the hat on the victim's head, let's just say I had a reason for doing that as well. A, a reason? That reason is right here. Phone? Your cell phone. That night, recall that I spoke with defense attorney Gavin after calling the police. Just in uh, case, I recorded our conversation. What's this? Now that we're all here, I see no reason why I shouldn't play it back for the court. Kristoff, I seem to be in a bit of trouble. What's this? Game's not going well? Something like that. That gentleman who challenged you, he turned out to be good? He turned out to be dead. Someone hit him hard. You mean someone cracked that flawless bone china, uh, pate? It wasn't you, was it? Me, please. The cop should be here any minute. I'm in your hands. Should it come to that? Bone china plate? A kind of porcelain. Very smooth and shiny. And not plate, but, um, pate. I believe he was referring to a certain gentleman's balding forehead. Hmm. Wait, so how would Kristoff know that he was bald if he was wearing a hat? That means that Kristoff met with him beforehand. The court appreciates the defendant's discretion in not indi indicating my forehead. Wait a second. Something's not right about that phone call. So after Mr. Gavin ate dinner with you, he left the Boris Bowl Club. Most certainly. Then, then how did he know? When did he see this bone china paint? Oh, that's right. Yes. That was when I began to see my good friend in a different light. Troubled, I returned to the crime scene. And when I spotted Mr. Smith's head again, I realized exactly what was wrong. Well, Mr. Gavin, the stage has been set. Perhaps you would like to explain this to the court. Exactly how did you come by your privileged knowledge of the victim's head? So, this is your reason. The reason why you put the victim's hat back on. Your point, Mr. Gavin. It's come down to this, has it, Phoenix Wright? Order! I will have order! Mr. Payne! Y yes Your Honor. I believe this court has been left with no other choice. Are you prepared to hear defense attorney Gavin's testimony? Now put the defense attorney on uh, to do a cross-examination. Um, so, the, the, Phoenix has two defense attorneys, Justin, uh, Justice and Gavin, and now one of his defense attorneys is going to cross-examine his other defense attorney. Hey, a hey, Irk, um, well, as the prosecutor, I... Very well, we'll break for ten minutes, after which Mr. Gavin will take the stand for a cross-examination. Are we all clear on that? Crystal clear, Your Honor. Very well, this will be the final recess for the day. April 20th, 2.32 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby, number 3. Mr. Gavin and Mr. Wright are both in the judges' chambers. Who would have thought today would turn out like this? May I? Who are you? Huh, what? Hello, sir, please. Pick a card. What, what, what's all this about? Is that Phoenix's daughter? It looks kind of like her. Uh, is this one okay? Ex excellent. I have a message for you. The last hand is about to be played. You'll need a trump card to make it. A trump card. The card you have chosen is magical. Use it wisely, and the game is yours. That's all. An ace. Where do I remember that card from? It's the, it's the fifth ace. It has blood on it. Mr. Uh, Smith's hand has three um, uh, aces, and Mr. Wright's two. It's five aces in all. It is true. I have seen it. The fifth ace. There was cheating, I swear to you. Missing fifth ace. Wait, this blotch of red. Is this blood? You have your trump card. Now it's up to you to cut the deck and draw the truth. My father's fate is in your hands. I know you can do it. So that's, um, uh, that's Phoenix's uh, daughter, like I thought. This bloodstained card is my trump card for finding the truth. Now, the thing about this is, um, 
somebody showing up in the lobby and giving the defense attorney witness uh, the defense attorney evidence, this would never fly in court. Um, uh, I fell deep into thought as my mind raced to understand what this all meant. That girl. I'd seen her recently, but where? She's Phoenix's um, daughter. That's when I made the connection. The locket, right? Yep. Received from Mysterious Girl. Could this be the missing fifth ace? Let's find out what the hell is going on here finally. Get to the bottom of this. Court will now reconvene. Defense Attorney Christoph Gavin, will you please take the stand? Now then, if you would, Mr. Payne. Y yes, Your Honor. Um, will Mr. Uh, the witness state his name and occupation? Is this far as necessary, Your Honor? Believe me. Far straw straight. Okay, that was really weird. Uh, my capture card crashed. I've never had that happen before. I don't know why it's happening a bu bunch on this game. Uh, fine, I'll play along. First, there's one thing we need to have made clear. How did you know about the secret beneath the victim's hat? By secret, I'm guessing he means the fact that Mr. Smith was bald. Forgive my curiosity, but what is this? Ab uh, is it about this fellow's head? Your Honor seems to have an in inordinate interest in it. Objection! I wouldn't call it inordinate, Mr. Gavin. But Mr. Wright, what did, uh, do you think you're doing, Wright? Wow, things sure look different from the other side. You know what I mean, Hollow. Speaking of looking from the other side, let's consider something for a second. The victim wore that hat all night, never once taken off except for that one time. That one time? Being the instant he was hit? Oh. When Mr. Wright returned from reporting the crime, the hat was lying on the floor. Mr. Wright picked it up and placed it on the victim's head. In other words, in order to have seen Mr. Smith's bald head, he would have had to have been there in the hideout at the time of the crime. In other words, I must be the real killer, is what you're trying to say. Not bad, Apollo. <laughs> Mr. Gavin? I'm afraid that I haven't been entirely honest with the court. What? Oh, I assure you, I had the noblest of intentions. I did it all to protect my client, Mr. Wright. Yet, I'm afraid in the current situation I see little reason to hide anything. Very well, allow me to tell you the truth of what happened that night. Finally, you may begin your testimony, let's hear it. Tell us, how were you involved in the events of that fateful night? That fateful night. That r the rage I sensed in that man that night troubled me, so I returned to the club. I went down to the basement and peeked in through the little window to the hideout. It must have been right after the murder took place. The victim was dead, as he appears in the photo. A bald head, as unconscious an unconscious girl, and right holding a bottle in his hand. I sensed that was not the best place for me to be at the time, and so I left. That's when the call came from right. No, this is this is BS. No, no, no. So you witnessed a murder? For better or worse, I missed the actual moment of the deed. Mr. Gavin, may I remind you that you are on Mr. Wright's defense team. Your testimony is clearly disadvantageous to your client. What else could I say? I'm standing on the witness stand, after all. So, you are Mr. Gavin. And you had to testify as you just did. You had to tell them you saw the scene of the crime through that little window. Uh, Mr. Wright? You had to say that. Because that was the only probable window of opportunity. Right, Apollo? Oh. Mr. Wright, the defense should do the cross-examination, not the defendant. Mr. Justice, are you prepared? Yes, Your Honor. I can't believe I'm going up against Mr. Gavin. This trial is getting a weirder and weirder. That fateful night... Rage I sensed in that man that night troubled me, so I returned to the club. That man? You mean Mr. Smith? He was different from the other customers. His aura, shall we say. I knew he was a serious poker player, but it was more than that. So, then you knew the true nature of your client's job? Of course, but I also knew he wasn't engaged in gambling, which would be illegal. Well, it makes sense that he'd know they were friends, after all. 
worried for my friend, I returned to the club. You see, I feared this Mr. Smith might be someone coming to settle an old score. I see. What happened then? I went down to the basement and peeked in through the little window to the hideout. The little window? Do you mean the one used to keep watch up the, up the stairs? Yes, a relic of the ancient past. The, the black marketeers use it, I believe. Why did you go through the trouble of peeking in through the window? Well, oh, some of these windows you can't see from the other side, from outside. Wouldn't it have been easier to just open the door and go into the room? I didn't want to upset Wright, you see. Upset Mr. Wright? Yes. What if my fears had been unfounded? I'd be walking in on their match. Bad form, to say the least. Hmm. So far, everything he's saying makes sense. It must have been right after the murder took place. How do you know it was right after the murder? Really, no need to shout, Justice. Ugh. I was just getting to that part in my testimony. Ah, uh, there he is. The coolest defense in the West. We know and love. Even when you're standing up there on the witness stand, some things never change. I was afraid you'd change too, Mick Wright, but you haven't. You and that overbearing personality of yours. With friends like these, who needs enemies? The victim was dead as he appears in the photo. By photo, you mean the second photograph of the crime scene. Precisely, you see. He wasn't wearing his hat then. I saw his head when he was dead. Then Mr. Wright came along and replaced his hat. Can you describe the scene of the crime for us? A bald head, an unconscious girl, and Wright holding a bottle in his hand. Those were the only three at the scene of the crime? Yes, as far as I saw at least. Then we're back where we started. The killer was the defendant, Phoenix Wright. Who else could it have been? But why didn't you talk to the police? Two reasons. First, I didn't actually witness the very moment of the crime. Well, you were there with- no, no, no. He was there with Phoenix the night of the murder. He can very much be questioned as a witness even if he didn't see the crime. Second. My office was asked to defend Wright. Even after seeing what I'd seen, I couldn't abandon my friend. Hmm. Objection! There must have been someone else there at the moment of the crime. Justice, I just said I saw no one, not a soul. But, but, that goes against what Mr. Wright said. Ah yes, this mysterious fourth person. Who would conveniently be the real killer, I suppose? Glad to see we agree, Mr. Gavin. Let me pose a question then. Tell me. What possible reason did the real killer have to swap the cards in the victim's hand? Hmm? Perhaps you can show us a reason why such a thing would be necessary. How can I show something I can't find myself? Remember, Apollo, the card that was swapped out was the fifth ace. The fifth ace, right. Well, Mr. Justice, the question of why the killer would swap out the card has been raised. Can you point to a reason? Single drop of blood marks the front of the card. No clues here. Cap come on the cards, a little Easter egg there. Um, Why the killer would swap the card has been raised. The fifth, remember Paul, the card that was swapped out was the fifth ace.
I think he switched it because of the... the blood on the card. What could the blood on the card mean? Could it be Kristoff's blood? It's now or never. The defense would like to present evidence uh, to, to the court. Evidence showing the reason why a card was swapped out. Then go ahead and point out your reason, Mr. Justice. Why did the killer take the fifth ace? My reason is... This. Is that an ace? Why? Why? It's got blood on it! Right next to the spade! What? What? This is insane. Why wasn't I told about this? Why? Could this be... Could this be the missing fifth ace? I inconceivable. How could you... What are you doing with that card? Look at how, look at how, look at the movement on his cheek right now, like that. He's nervous. Um, well, that's the thing. Why is Mr. Gavin so upset? It's just a fishy card from some fishy girl. Oh, that card, it's mine. That is, I picked it up uh, at the Borscht Bowl Club that night after the murder had occurred. I gave it to my daughter. Cards are her stock and trade, after all. No, no, impossible. Unacceptable. The court can't accept this evidence. It's a fraud. A fraud? How can you be so sure? What? What? I would think the only person who could claim it was a fraud would be the one who took the real card from the crime scene, the real killer. Allow me to elaborate. What if this trace of blood was the reason? Exactly, that's what I was thinking. The reason for, for the killer to take the card from the scene of the crime. What are you going with this? It's Kristoff. Take another look at the photo and at the victim's head. At the moment of the crime, his hat fell to the floor. And a trickle of blood ran from his forehead down the back of his head. Couldn't be a, a, a drop of, uh, of that blood have fallen on one of the cards, I suppose. The killer then took the card to hide the blood. Regardless, that evidence is non-permissible. Oh? Right. Regardless how you wasted the last seven years, you used to be a lawyer. You know what a serious crime it is to conceal evidence. Oh, we can discuss the finer points for our legal system later. What's important now is that I've answered your question. What What are you talking about? You wanted to know why the killer would have taken a card from the crime scene. And now, I've told you. That one drop of blood would have been decisive evidence, you see. Objection! This, this is baseless conjecture. Baseless! Objection! Oh, I assure you, it's quite based. What? What? It's amazing, really. How a single drop of blood on a single card can lead us to the truth. It's quite simple. Well, Apollo? Y y yes Try picturing the scene of the crime. The murder took place in the hideout. The body of the of the luckless victim was found at the poker table, and before the killer swapped the card out, there was a single card with a drop of blood on it in the victim's hand. Given this, there is one decisive problem with this scene. Well, what is it? Let's keep it simple, shall we? Given that there was a drop of blood on a card, Whose position in this diagram doesn't fit? The victims, the killers, the witnesses, the second witnesses. Whose position doesn't fit with a bloody card? the window that Gavin claims he was at. Take that! 
Oh no, I didn't. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, I. I was trying to go to the court record. That's what I was trying to go to. Uh, I was. Uh, that was a, that's a fail. Yeah. I think this is the answer right here. That a trickle of blood ran from his for uh from his forehead down the back of his head. So the blood the blood was going like this. So he was like that and the blood was going like that. I think that's the the answer. So that means the victim was moved because because then that means that the blood would have gone this way and fallen to the table. But if he, if the blood went like that, that makes no sense. I think it's the victim because the blood would have been going to the back. It would have been going behind him. It wouldn't- there's no- Something's wrong with the- Let's see if I'm right on this. Well, isn't it the victim's position that's the problem? I don't follow your logic here, Mr. Justice. Well, look! The victim was struck on the head, sending him back in his chair. You'd think any blood would be fall behind the body, not onto the table in front of him. Exactly! Ah. Take a look at the photo again. If he bled in this position, the blood would fall on the floor, not on the cards. Why, that's right. So, what does this mean? Incidentally, we were sitting in swivel chairs. Swivel chairs. You can turn them. Apollo, try turning the chair around. Recreate the crime scene. The chair was facing the other way, but why? Why was it facing the other way? It would have to be. So we have to assume that at the time of the murder, the victim's chair was facing away from the table. But why? Why, is, why was he facing the wall? It's such a weird position. When Mr. Wright returned from informing the police, wh which way was the chair facing? When I came back to the room, the body was facing as seen in this photo. That would mean the killer turned the chair back around. Let's take the next step. Look at the diagram once more. We uh, know now the victim was facing away from the table at the time of the murder. But this creates another significant contradiction. A again? 
Let's test your reasoning skills again, shall we? Apollo, whose location this diagram contradicts our new understanding of the crime? The victims, the killers, the witnesses, the second wit uh, witness. The second witness. What doesn't make sense is a second witness. You mean to say I don't make sense? Oh, um, no, of course you do, er, sir. As I thought... Oh, crap, hang on. Mr. Justice, did you say something? Would you... Okay, hang on a second. Gonna go with the killer then, because it was at the killer that the that the killer hit him from the front. The victim was struck from the front, correct? Yeah, indeed. Well, wouldn't it be hard for the killer to hit him from the front? Sitting where his indicator currently is, I would think it'd be quite hard. Yes. Yes, but what you're saying makes no sense. Why would the victim suddenly turn to face the wall? In the middle of a game. I believe a sufficient reason will soon come to light. W what There's something in this diagram that makes far less sense, actually. Look again at the diagram. Apollo, if the victim was struck while he was sitting as shown here, where would his assailant be standing? Try marking it on the diagram. What? But... No room to put a mark where the killer should be. Don't worry, let's think it through and see what we find. We know the victim was facing towards the wall at the time of the crime. That's the only thing we know for sure. Try to forget about everything else. Where would the killer uh, have to be standing to strike the victim from the front? Here. But th that, that really makes no sense. Unless there's a secret door there? killer to be standing well up uh, here you get points for flair but that's about all you get uh, thought I was onto something there too I hardly need to f point out that standing there will be impossible the victim is facing a solid cupboard or are you claiming the killer climbed the cupboard and hit from above it's simple logic really if this was the only place the killer could have been standing he was hiding in the cupboard or was it a passageway and that means that, at the very moment of the crime... Wait, I know. At the moment of the crime, the cupboard... ...wasn't there. What's... I didn't even think of that. That it, it was moved? The cupboard was moved. What's this now? I mean, that's the only explanation. Right, Mr. Gavin? Your Honor, I have a suggestion for the defense. We should arrange to examine the cupboard in the hideout. Immediately! Bailiff, send the team to the crime scene immediately. Have them try to move the cupboard. Your, uh, your honor? What? There's one more thing your men should look for. Please give, uh, this uh, to the bailiff. What's that? Hmm? Mm, yes, I see. You do belong in the courtroom after all, Mr. Wright. I do my best. But let's forge ahead here while we wait. Look at the diagram once again. It's been changed. If the killer was was standing here at the time of the crime, then this cupboard wasn't here. Which means... Hollow, try moving the cupboard. It was in front of the window. That's the only other place it could have been. It was in front of the window, so Gavin couldn't have seen. He couldn't have seen it. That's why he moved it. At the time of the murder, it had to have been shown as here. 
Now everything is in place to reconstruct the moment of the crime. Oh my. What's this? What, 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 what is this now? Look at the diagram of the crime scene once more. It appears we found yet another contradiction. What I believe to be the final contradiction, in fact. Huh? Oh, dang. Notice something, Apollo? I know, I know what it is. Our line of deduction is rapidly approaching its logical conclusion. Now then, Mr. Justice, please point to the new contradicting indicator. Is it the victim, the killer, the witness, the second witness? Which indicator in this diagram contradicts what we know about the crime? This. Um, about this cupboard. Are we all okay with assuming it was moved? Sure, why not? Well, if it was, something really doesn't fit. The cupboard would completely cover up the window to the stairs. Ah, that's right. Someone standing outside wouldn't be able to see in. Someone like Mr. Gavin. What? What did you say? Look at his lip again. Oh, is the, the coolest defense um, uh, in the West losing is, is cool. Don't expect me to play along with your little game, right? It's only a game until someone gets killed, Mr. Gavin. And someone was, while the window to that room was blocked by cupboard. So, Mr. Gavin, perhaps you'd like to explain to the court. Exactly. Where did you witness the crime scene from? Excuse me, Your Honor. Order, this is a court of law and I will have order. We just now received word from our investigative team at the Bors Bowl Club. They've examined the cupboard in the hideout, Your Honor, and... And what did you find? Well, Your Honor... It turns out there is a secret passage behind it! I knew it! What? Ah, yes, I believe I mentioned something of the short before. This is one of the tricks the uh, to the room many of our regulars know about. I do remember him saying something about that, now that he mentions it. A secret passage is a handy thing to have when you're engaged in illegal goings, uh, going-ons. Never know, uh, when you might need to duck away from the eyes of the law. So the room has a secret passage. Where does it go? The other side connects to the restaurant above. The underworld bosses uh, could get away from the cops. And enjoy a cold bowl of borscht, no doubt. Just like our killer. You see where our line of simple deductive reasoning has led us, Apollo? I see it. I don't believe it. That girl wasn't kidding when she said I needed this trump card for the last hand. At the time of the murder, the window was blocked and the victim's hat was only off his head for a few minutes before Mr. Smith's murder. And Mr. Wright's return from calling the cops. In other words, the only place anyone could have seen the victim's bald head was from inside the hideout. Well, Mr. Gavin? Come on, say something. Hmm. There I ask what really happened that night. Actually, I think we can probably figure it out ourselves at this point. That night, for whatever reason, our killer had a date with Mr. Smith. A date with destiny. There he crouched, hidden in se secret passageway behind a cupboard. Holding his breath, waiting for just the right moment. Then the chance came, and he took it. What? Why did you do that? Wait here, I'll get help. Miss Olga Orly was out cold, struck by Mr. Smith. When his time was soon to, uh, to come, Mr. Wright went upstairs to call the cops, leaving Mr. Shady Smith alone in the hideout with the unconscious dealer. Then our killer stepped out from the secret passage into the hideout. The victim must have heard the cupboard sliding aside. He wheeled his chair around to look and... After the deed was done, the criminal uh, must have seen the blood on the card. He would have, of course, realized uh, the need to destroy the evidence. That single spot of blood told the whole story of the crime. Too bad for him he didn't linger um, any longer in the hideout that night. If he had, he might have noticed the cards in the floor. 
and the fact that they were all red. But why? What is his motive? Why did why did why did Kristoff do that? Why? Well, it seems this trial has taken yet another turn. And truly, uh, I'm truly, truly sorry I had to see this day come, Mr. Gavin. Mr. Gavin. Mr. Payne. Eric, ahem, yes, Your Honor? The prosecution will uh, continue its investigation. As for Mr. Phoenix Wright, the defendant, he is hereby cleared of all suspicion. Believe me when I say that I don't believe this is happening, Mr. Gavin. But I'm afraid circumstances call for me to issue a warrant for your arrest. Immediately. Objection! Oh, no need to apologize. I rather enjoyed myself. It's not every day you get to witness a legendary attorney's dirty tactics firsthand. Your point, Mr. Gavin? Frankly, Your Honor, I'm shocked that a person of your caliber um, uh, would be taken in by such a low-grade parlor trick. Um, excuse me? The defendant is cleared of all suspicion. This is hardly the time for jokes, Your Honor. Mr. Wright hasn't proven anyone's guilt or innocence here. What he has done is use illegal evidence to point, uh, put the blame on someone else. And not just anyone else, but me, his own defense attorney. Uh, illegal evidence? Objection! Let me ask you, Mr. Gavin. Is there still any reason, at present, to suspect me of wrongdoing? Of course. This bottle, for instance. The bottle of grape juice Mr. Wright was drinking. How do you intend to explain away the fingerprints on the murder weapon? And not just any fingerprints. Am I right, Mr. Payne? Uh, actually, yes. The fingerprints on the bottle were, um, upside down. I seem to recall this being an issue earlier. The court and this case demand an explanation. I can think of only one reason why, uh, one would hold a bottle upside down. And that is to hit someone with the bottom of the bottle. Well, Your Honor? Hmm. Uh, see how uh, the caught fish squirms to the last. Well, Apollo? Y yes. Your boss seems awfully concerned about this bottle still. But I'm sure you can come up with a suitable explanation. Just like that. Um, yeah. Just like what? Why would anyone grab a bottle upside down other than to... Don't let him trick you into thinking his explanation is the only legitimate one. Um, is there really another? Take another look at the court record. I believe you'll find a simple answer there. In plain sight. Um, how about you just say the answer in plain words? It would be a hasty to deliver a verdict with unanswered questions indeed. Well, Mr. Justice? Mr. Gavin said that the court, in this case, demanded an explanation. Don't worry, Justice. Won't leave until justice is done. Perhaps the defense would care to enlighten the court. What evidence do you have to explain why the fingerprints on the bottle are upside down? Why are Phoenix's fingerprints on the bottle upside down? here. If he took it out of the crate, his fingerprints would be upside down, wouldn't it? Because he would be grabbing it like this when he's taking it out of the crate, wouldn't he? Phoenix said the evidence is in plain sight. Is this it? Because if you were getting the bottle out of the crate, you would be going like this. But the bottle's on a table, you would just be getting it like this. Let's see if I'm right. It's actually easier to show you than explain, Your Honor. 
Place that bottle on the floor, next to your chair. Excuse me? Oh, on the floor. Yes. Now reach down and pick it up. Without getting out of your chair. Ah. See? You naturally go to pick up the bottle by its neck. With your fingers, upside down. I got it, I did it. I got it. Look at this photograph taken on the night of the murder. The defendant, Mr. Wright, sat here. Playing piano, bottles of grape juice on the floor to the side of his piano bench. He would have naturally picked up the bottles upside down several times. Wow, I can't believe it was that simple. Recall our dinner that evening, Kristoff. I was drinking my usual juice then, too. Basically used the bottle on the table to do the deed. But then you must have remembered. So you went up and picked up one of the bottles from under the piano. And you switched the bottles. You took one of Mr. Wright's bottles and made it look like the murder weapon. Order, order! What do you have to say to these charges, Mr. Gavin? So that explains how Wright never touched the murder weapon, because it wasn't the murder weapon. So when he said he, he put the card in there, if they go back to the restaurant, they should be able to find the right bottle with the card in it. Fascinating. So this is the legendary attorney's famed tactic of misdirection. What? What? You claim that I switched the bottle. Where is your proof? Proof? Well, that's, uh... As I thought, more baseless conjecture. I'm afraid your bottle of proof is quite empty. Objection! I wouldn't be so sure about that. Your Honor, when you initiated the investigation of the hideout earlier, you recall I requested additional investigation. What did he write on that piece of paper? Ah, uh, yes. I have your memo about that here. Retrieve the bottles from under the piano at the Boris Bowl Club. And here's one of the bottles in question. The the bottle is going to have the card in it. And not only that is it going to have the card in it, it's, it should have Kristoff's fingerprints on it. Hmm, what are you going to do? Dust that for fingerprints too? I would be surprised if any were on that, but his. Mr. Gavin probably wouldn't make such a novice mistake, true. That bottle won't bear a trace of anything. The card is going to be in there, the card. Say, Apollo. Y yes Why don't you go ahead and examine that bottle? But, but, but why? Just humor me. Mr. Wright. That bottle will solve the case once and for all. The card. What? That's some bottle. There it is. That card. There's something inside the bottle. I knew it. What's this? That that card, it can't be. Recall that unpleasant woman's testimony for a moment. Or Miss Olga, or like unpleasant woman, how he called her. Yes, our little swindling uh, devachka. That night, I planted the card like I was supposed to. And Wright lost the last hand, just like he was supposed to. Then Smith searched him. But the planted card was gone. The trap failed. Wait, this isn't... You're telling me that this is the planted card you disposed of. The one you mentioned in this piece of testimony. I happened to put my hand in my pocket and found a card. Yes, I snuck a peek at it and found it was the Five of Hearts. I had a feeling something might happen, so I disposed of the card before the game. Disposed? Where? There was an empty bottle of grape juice I had been drinking right beside me. I threw the card inside the bottle. Five of hearts. This is the card. The bottles were swapped. And the only one who could have done that was the fourth person in the club that night. You, Mr. Christoph Gavin. That is all. 
Wh why did he do it? Is this your idea of revenge, Phoenix Wright? Revenge? Revenge for the events that took away your attorney's badge seven years ago. My past is like my logic, straight and true. Nothing's changed. All I did was point the finger of justice in the proper direction. Fine. I'm glad we could have this little tea, tea day, uh, tea day, right? This, this is insane. What about me? Don't I get to prosecute anyone? <laughs> I believe this time we've finally come to the end of our trial. Mr. Payne, you have a report for us on Christoph Gavin. He's admitted everything. We're pro processing his arrest now. I see. Still, one has to be a uh, wonder why he would do such a thing. He didn't even have a connection to the victim, did he? Er, uh, none that we know of. Mr. Wright, have you anything to add? I'm afraid I can't shed any more light on the matter. About the victim, Mr. Shady Smith. His occupation was listed as Traveler. An odd profession to be, uh, sure, and that's all we know about him. I'll arrange a follow-up investigation, Your Honor. Good, Mr. Wright. Yes. Seven years ago, and you still haven't lost your touch. Christoph Gavin was a man of a mu much, with much significance for me, both as a friend and a lawyer. He was extremely talented, to be sure. I needed two things before I could confront him. The first was a place where no injustice would be tolerated, this courtroom. The second was a man who would tolerate no injustice. In other words, a defense attorney. You, Apollo. Me. That's why he chose Apollo, not, not Gavin, to represent him. This is a dark time for our legal system. A twisting of justice brought on by our very own initial trial system. We have to set it right. Mr. Wright! Our work lies ahead of us. And I, for one, am looking forward to it. Well, this seems like a good time to announce a verdict. The court finds the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Not guilty. We did it! But the, the thing that wasn't cleared up is what was the motive? Why did Kristoff do that in the first place? There's still no motive explained. Or is adjourned. Why did he do that? District Defendant uh, Lobby Number 3. Thanks, Apollo. So this is the music that plays when you win a case? You came through just like I thought you would. I'm pretty sure I didn't do a thing in there. It was you who co cornered Mr. Gav, the killer. I couldn't have done it by myself. You sensed it too, today, didn't you? Your ability. Ability? Yes, a sensitivity I lack. You'll come to understand it soon enough. Wait, I wonder if he means... I have one question for the witness, then. You say you saw the moment the defendant hit the victim. Is this true? Of, of course it's true. That. The weird vibe. What? What was that, Mr. Wright? You have to find the answer to that question yourself. The answer, right? The day was full of questions without answers. Most of them about Mr. Gavin. What possible reason could he have had to commit murder? Perhaps you'll learn that in the days to come. Hmm? Wait. Uh, you don't know, do you? This locket is the key. Huh? Oh, that reminds me. I met the girl whose picture is in your locket. Your daughter, right? That's right. He's my daughter. You know, you were right about this locket. Eh? I took this off, off his neck the night he died. But it looks like our dear Russian scam artist saw me. The truth is this locket really did belong to him. Wait, but that's that's perjury. You testified you said that locket was yours. I said no such thing, actually. Huh? I merely said that it was a locket with my daughter's picture inside. A subtle dis distinction, but a distinction nonetheless. And it's the truth. Wait, but then why? Why was the victim wearing a locket with a picture of your daughter inside it? Dumping the straightest path to the truth, uh... Uh, isn't the best one. Give it time. You're still just getting started with your career. Speaking of which, I may be out of a job. I work for Gavin Law Offices, after all. I still can't believe I just saw Mr. Gavin get led away in handcuffs. Apollo. Yes. How about coming to work for me? Eh? You mean at, at the Wright & Co. Law Offices? I mean, there's not a single attorney in my generation that doesn't know it. I can't imagine that to be true, but... Wait, but didn't you... 
You're not a... Oh, I turned in my badge, yes. I'm not an attorney anymore. That incident seven years ago. That legendary trial. And at that middle um, of it all was one man, Phoenix Wright. The case reached his sad conclusion, and he left law for good. Have you ever thought about coming back to the courts? I'm not qualified to stand in the court of law, I'm afraid. Didn't you notice in today's trial? There was a, a, a single piece of forged evidence. Forged evidence? But what are you talking about? The card. The card was the forged evidence. I'm talking about the evidence that shouldn't have existed. A naughty magician's trick. Hmm. One piece of evidence struck me as odd, it's true. It just seemed, well, too perfect. I'll bet this was the, uh, the forged evidence. You mean this, don't you? I got this from your um, daughter, Mr. Wright. Yes, that card couldn't have been found at the crime scene. Why? Because the killer took it with him when he left. Leaving the wrong card in its place. Luckily for us. So he tricked the killer. The court can't accept this evidence. It's a fraud. A fraud? How can you be so sure? I would think that only uh, the only person who could claim it was a fraud would be the one who took the real card from the crime scene. The real killer. So that's a pretty dirty trick. Um, that would not fly in real court. It wouldn't exist. Um, it would not ever happen like that. But let me know in the comments. Do you guys think that was right? the right thing to do? To bring in a fake card during the trial? My verdict was already handed down. Seven years ago. Then, you really... Yes, I forged this card. One look at the crime scene should have told you it wasn't real. But, you, you can't do something like that and call yourself an attorney. Who's calling themselves an attorney, Apollo? So it's true. The rumor is true. Seven years ago... None of that matters much now, does it? He forged evidence? Grah! <laughs> I punched him. It's your story from here on out, Apollo. Perhaps I can help you turn the next page. My office address. Drop in, if you like. Mr. Wright. Oh, about your uppercut. Try yelling. Take that next time. I find it packs a little more punch. And Apollo, thanks for today. I had a good time. And with that, Mr. Wright walked out the door. And that's how my first trial ended. A lot of mysteries went unsolved. And at the time, I had no idea they were all re uh, related. Every mystery that day, connected by a single thread of logic. I'd find that out soon enough. My name is Apollo Justice, attorney at law, and this is how my story begins. So that's the end. Um, uh, for people wondering, this is a very long game. Um, uh, this game still has 14 more cases. 14 more cases. So that was only the first case. There's still 14 more cases. So it's gonna be a very long game. It's a game that I'll be playing for over a month. I'm probably gonna do Manhunt 2 in between, though. Um, because I know a lot of people have requested that, too. Um, but, um, let's, I guess, save here. So let me know what you, what did you guys think of that trial? That got crazy, didn't it? But thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, do drop a like, and I will see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys.